say, Amen, but all adore Thee, high on Thine eternal throne. Savior, take the power and the glory, claim the kingdom as Thine own. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our coming King, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this Sunday is, this is a little different and then it's a continuation of our Wednesday midweek Advent services. We, we had three of those services and we were in, the, in 1 Thessalonians preparing for Christ's second coming. We, we celebrate that He has come and we look forward to the fact that He will come. And what do we do in this in-between time? Well, on Wednesday, the title of the sermon was, You've Got a Ticket to Ride. We've Got a Ticket to Ride. A confirmed ticket, not a standby ticket. It's not a question of, well, when Jesus gets here, uh, maybe there's a seat for you. Maybe there's a place in heaven with the Lord for you. No, it is confirmed because Christ has made you His. The Holy Spirit has called you by the Gospel. You've been washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. Uh, Christ will return. There will be resurrection because there has been resurrection on Easter. There will be rapture and reunion with Christ at the center. And Wednesday, we talked about being at the airport and the stress of a standby ticket versus a confirmed ticket. But today, I want to go back to the airport here. uh, and, And I want you to think about going through the the check-in process, and finally getting to the gate and then finding out that the flight is delayed. It's not a question of whether it's going to come or not. It's going to come, but the flight has been delayed. And there are different reactions that maybe you've had, that maybe you've watched other people have uh, as they wait for the plane to get here, as they wait for more information. Because the first group of people I want to talk about are the people, uh, let's call them the pushers. They, they push for information. The person who goes up to the ticket agent who pulls out their smartphone, who calls the 1-800 number for the airline and says, let me know when will this flight be here? As if pushing for more information would make the flight get here sooner. And everybody around them has to know that this is an emergency. You ought to call too. Start a petition. We will get that plane here now. But there's only so much you can do with that information. There's only so much they can tell you. Well, there was a guy, uh, a NASA engineer uh, named Edgar Wisenhunt, who in the 1980s wrote a book called 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Take Place in 1988. Well, we, we know in 2014 this, this didn't happen then. So 26 years later, Edgar Wisenhunt was wrong. But Edgar Wisenhunt was a pusher. He pushed for information. He said that the Scripture will prove me right. And he said if it doesn't happen, then the Scriptures are wrong. Well, September 10th, 1988 came and went. And Edgar Wisenhunt said, well, I was wrong. I started in year one. It should have been year zero. Well, September 10th, 1989 has come and gone. And Christ has not returned yet. You see, there's some information that is good to know. It is good to know that you and I have a good shepherd. It is good to know that we sinners who huddle together this morning have a hope. Not a hope within us, but a hope that has come down to us. A hope of a king who is seated at the right hand of the Father. But also, we have information that comes in the Scriptures. We have St. Paul who tells us and told the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2, he said, Now, brothers, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And like a thief in the night, the thief doesn't tell. Has anybody here ever been robbed? Nobody went, okay, did you know it was going to happen ahead of time? No, yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. Anyone here do any robberies? Are you a thief? Then you need to repent if you are. No, uh, uh, the, 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 the thief does not announce when they're coming, and Jesus has said, I, I don't even know the time. He tells the disciples in Matthew 24, he says, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. He is going to come. He's going to return, but we don't know the time. Edgar Wisenhunt didn't know. He'll find out when we find out, when Christ returns, but it'll be like a thief in the night. Well, I mean, there are some things that we just aren't supposed to know until they happen. Uh, You're not supposed to really know the date of your death, because if you do, 
You've probably taken your own life, or you've had someone take it for you. Uh, Not supposed to know when a surprise party is happening for you. Kind of ruins everything. And I say this only half tongue-in-cheek. Sometimes you're not supposed to know when your mother-in-law is coming for a visit. Uh, Only half tongue-in-cheek. Andrew's not here yet. Uh, And we don't know when Christ will return, but we do know that he's going to. He told the disciples... He said, it's not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set by His own authority. By the the power, the authority of the Father. And we as His dear children, we trust Him. He's returning, but we don't know when. Well, there's another group of people who would react to being in the terminal and, and finding out that their flight is delayed. Let's call them the doubters. The people who are the pessimists. Maybe I would fall into that group. Yeah, exactly what I thought. Murphy's Law again. It never fails. Every flight I'm on, always delayed. I, I, the plane probably won't ever show up. You know the doubters. And maybe you fall into that camp. St. Paul said to the Thessalonians in verse 3, While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman. They will not escape. Now, he's talking about doubting people who said, oh, the day of the Lord, it's it's not going to be violent. It's not going to be sudden or bad. Oh, peace and safety. He's saying saying, even to those, don't doubt what this day will be like. The roof will be torn off. The last trumpet will sound. There will be power and glory. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Don't doubt that it's going to happen. And St. Paul says to the Thessalonians and to us, It's going to happen. You won't escape. You want to find out that Christ really means it? Because you will. So don't doubt Christ's words, the Word of the Lord, but believe and trust. Well, there's another group of people at the airport and maybe some that just decide, you know, I've got a little extra time Time to catch some shut-eye, take a nap. I feel like this was my, the bulk of my four years at Purdue. My whole life was centered around taking a nap. Uh, as soon as one class would end, I would find a place to take a nap. I didn't have a cell phone at that time, didn't even have a watch with an alarm, and I would hope I would wake up in time for class. But, but there were many classes that I slept right through. I mean, I didn't even go to class. I just slept in the union. But sometimes as Christians, right, this is the way that we can sleepwalk through life and then Advent comes in if you weren't listening before and you hear, wake up, get up, repent, be ready, be alert. Jesus has said it again and again and we say it here in the church and we as your pastors say, wake up, be ready. St. Paul says in verse 6, so then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. It's so easy to become indifferent and apathetic to the Gospel, to God's Word, to say, I've heard it. This is my 67th Advent season and I've heard these words and Jesus hasn't come back yet. And Wake up! He's coming! He'll be here soon. Sooner than you know. This is your divine wake-up call. Well, there's another group of people, and, and maybe this group of people, maybe I've been there before too, the people who hear that the flight is delayed and decide, you know, there's a TGI Fridays or the airport bar is just down the hall. We've got time to go have a drink or two or six to watch a game or two and have some appetizers, and, and they want to just go play, and playing is not necessarily a bad thing in God's creation, but sometimes playing becomes the main thing to the exception of everything else. St. Paul says, For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then he says, So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. Some of you know the artist uh, Dave Matthews. Some of you maybe have been to a concert and there's a song, Tripping Billies, and and it's not Dave Matthews' sentiment. He just repeats someone else's, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Just play, because this is all there is. There's nothing else, so make the most of it. Have a good time. I don't think it's just players here that go down to the bar. For our case, it's 
pagan players. People, even you and me, who would look no different than the world around us, would look no different than pagans. People that don't know the true God, don't know that there is light and life and salvation in the midst of darkness and death and despair. You and I, yeah, we're sinners, but you've heard the good news. So repent and believe. Repent of the times that we were no different than pagan players. But you and I are saved sheep, sanctified sinners. And so hear the warning, the Advent warning. Repent. And then hear the Gospel. Believe the good news. Your Savior comes. And thousand, thousand saints adore Him. He comes for you and me. And then finally, I think there's the group that St. Paul would have us fall into from verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with Him. Encouragers. Now this isn't just a Pollyanna-ish eternal optimism based on nothing. This is encouragement based upon the One who is your rock and Redeemer. This is encouragement based upon the One who was lifted high upon the cross for you and me, who didn't stay dead, but rose again on the third day. Who ascended to the right hand of the Father and still orders all things, and controls all things, who reigns for you and me. This isn't the first time that St. Paul has talked about faith and hope and love. Maybe some of you had these these three at your wedding from 1 Corinthians 13. But St. Paul in chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians said, Remembering before our God and Father, He remembers your work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith that trusts in the promise and the Savior. Hope that looks to the now but clings to the not yet. And love, love of a good shepherd who lays down his life for you and me, his sheep. Love that comes from within the body of Christ and loves and treats other people better than they deserve. Yeah, even my mother-in-law who shows up unannounced because that's the way we've been treated. Encouragement that says that we can boldly come together even in the midst of pain and sorrow, even death itself, and proclaim that there is one who shines even in the deepest, darkest recesses of our lives. We can boldly say that this one who has died will be raised again to new life because Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. In our hymn, we sang it. Alleluia. 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 Christ the Lord returns to reign for you and me. So back to the terminal at the airport. Christ is going to return. We, we, don't know, we don't know when exactly. It could be today and that would be awesome. It would be awesome. No more funeral planning. No more illness or terminal sorts, no more broken families, no more stress over who's going to sit by who at the holiday dinner table or even if someone's going to show up or not. Yeah, hope, forgiveness, and salvation. We have it now in measures, but, but on that day, it'll be perfect. Christ is, is on His way. He was here. He'll be back. He, he won't let us down. And, and so we encourage one another with these words. That, don't be afraid. We encourage one another with those words. When someone has sinned against you, you forgive them as you have been forgiven. You even boldly ask for forgiveness knowing that your guilt and shame is taken by Christ. So be alert. Be of good cheer. Live not as pagans, 
but as sanctified saints, washed clean in the blood of Jesus, your King, whose birth we'll celebrate, well, we've been celebrating, but on Wednesday, on Thursday, but whose return we anticipate. To Him be the glory. Amen. Please stand.